Thank you for joining us for this live event. We hope the information that you receive today will be helpful and beneficial. I want to remind you to please follow us on Facebook so that you can stay informed when we post more helpful videos and events and resources such as this. We want to remind you that Facebook Live is a public forum and therefore complete anonymity cannot be guaranteed. And although we welcome and appreciate your comments and questions in our live feed, you are more than welcome to email us those comments and questions in an effort to further protect your anonymity. So without further ado, let's begin. Hello everybody, welcome to our Facebook Live presentation. Uh, we're so glad you're joining us today. Uh, we're going to tackle a very sensitive but important topic on infidelity and couple relationships. Yeah, we're here to talk about infidelity and we understand that there may be a wide range of people watching, um, you may be experiencing going through um, infidelity, um, you may have friends or relatives that are experiencing it, you may be a professional that helps couples and clients work through this, you may be a community member, um, minister, clergy member, and just want to get some more information about how to help people and we understand that. So we're going to speak to infidelity from um, to a wide audience. Right, and so we're wanting to help you make some sense out of a very chaotic event and that causes a lot of havoc and chaos in people's lives. Right. And so, uh, but before we begin, we do want to remind you that Facebook Live is a public forum, and I know you mm -hmm. just heard this, but we do welcome your questions in our live feed, but if you would like to remain more anonymous uh, to others tuning in, uh, then please email your questions and we'll do our best to address those in our Q&A time and you're going to see some posts coming from someone named Valerie and Valerie is uh, our office manager and she's here to help uh, provide you more information and some quality links and resources as we go through this presentation. Right um, and so you can send your messages to Valerie um, for more protection, more confidentiality. Um, you're going to also get us answering and also our colleague Rebel Bursmeyer. Just to tell you a little bit about us, um, we are licensed marital and family therapists. Mm -hmm. We're also certified sex addiction therapists. Um, we have built a practice around helping couples and clients um, reconnect and recover from addiction um, and from relational problems. We use a um, team approach here is what we call it. And so mm -hmm. um, when our clients come in, they get a whole team of professionals that are treatment planning, that are personalizing their goals, um, and really getting clients what they need. Exactly, and so, um, you know, a 30 to 40 minute presentation okay. isn't a ton of time to cover all the things that we cover with our clients in treatment, right. but uh, we do hope and, and we think that the information that we'll present to you today will be encouraging to you and offer you some direction because the reality is, is that relationships can and do survive the impact and the trauma of infidelity yeah. and that can be true for you that's watching if you've experienced this or if you're working with couples going through this we want you to have to have that hope for them as well because right. it, it can and does happen and we and that's what one of the things that we do on right. a regular basis with right. couples right and so let us let's begin and so the the first thing is, that we want to establish is that um, infidelity is a very painful experience so if you're wondering should I be experiencing this pain so we know a lot of couples right. come in asking that you know or, or thinking that maybe it shouldn't be as painful as what they're going through and no it it is a very deep wound and it does need attention right it's as stressful as major medical problems um, you know, people report it's as stressful as cancer diagnoses and treatment, as you know, the death of a you know a loved, beloved person, and so mm -hmm. it's a very, very deep wound, and it, it rocks the relationship and each individual and potentially others involved in the family or community mm -hmm. as well. Exactly, and so, so in in the model that we work under and, and how we do the team approach is that we see. Uh, the entity that there are three entities at play that need a clinical attention after right. the wound of infidelity. So, and we're going to talk about all three of those mm -hmm. in this presentation in a very limited amount of time. So, um, we re reserve some room at the end right. to answer some questions, and our and our colleague Rebel that works real closely with us on this is going to be filtering through those mm -hmm. and providing those with us through email and also through the live feed. So. Um, we're, we can't guarantee we're going to get to all the questions, but we're going to try to uh, to get to uh, most of them that come through. Right. 
And so the, those three entities that we're talking about that are at play here are the, the wounded uh, partner or the betrayed partner. So you might hear us use that language interchangeably. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the unfaithful spouse or partner, or sometimes it, we sometimes carry now get a little clinical and we can't right. sometimes have a hard time taking our therapist hats off. Right. Um, but sometimes I, I might, or Carrie might refer to this person as the offending partner, but that's just the unfaithful spouse. Right, right. And then also there's the wounded relationship mm -hmm. that we also have to tend to as well. Mm -hmm. And we really do believe if, if all three entities aren't getting the proper care and attention they need, it really mm -hmm. uh, makes recovery a, a big struggle. Right, right. It's important to recognize that the wound has happened to each in between, right? And so right. that's why we talk about the, the third entity being the couple. And, and as Josh said, you'll hear us use different language um, and also probably different pronouns. So you'll hear he, right. her, him, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's just understand that we know, and that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about infidelity, that mm -hmm. infidelity happens across cultures, across age groups, mm -hmm. across socioeconomic statuses. Exactly. It, it happens. Yeah. All over. A lot of time, I think, in our culture, um, the question is, why do men cheat? But right. women are right. cheating, too. It's right. happening in both genders, right. too. Absolutely. And, and uh, obviously, we can't uh, disclose our clients' identities, but we can say that we, we have seen clients, right. male and female, that have been unfaithful mm -hmm. in their sure. relationships. Sure, it's across... All types yeah. and all genders of relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So before we before we dive into this first entity, let's just talk a little bit about what is infidelity and make sure that we're all on the same page here right. to establish what exactly is this phenomenon that mm -hmm. we typically call infidelity. Right, right. Well, most people, when you hear the word infidelity, people think of affair, right? The word affair, and that mm -hmm. has this kind of... Um, Oh, I guess you could even say romanticized version of um, you know meeting up with someone that you care about and having liaisons, um, and that exactly. it's a lingering experience, um, mm -hmm. oftentimes a, a somewhat romantic relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, infel infidelity is uh, a bit, little bit broader of a scope than right. that, right? And, right. We've, and we've worked with all these different types that we're just going to briefly mention. Right. Right. But it, it's it's more than an affair, and. Uh, it can be more than an affair. It can, it can be. be just an affair. It could be a single event. It could be a relationship that has developed over time right. and, and it transpired and or turned into a, a physical affair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, there, it can be a lot of other things too. Like it can be chronic. It can be multiple affairs, multiple partners, right. one night stands, and anonymous sex, right. and things like that as well. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we have to work hard, at do, hard to do is also determine the difference between infidelity and sex addiction. Mm -hmm. And so this isn't a presentation today to right. talk about sex right. addiction, but it is something that we have to control for. Right. We're always anything? screening, so to speak, for that when people come in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having more than one um, sexual experience outside of your committed relationship doesn't make you a sex addict, but the context and the nature of perhaps using sex in relationships is something we're looking for because we would treat that differently than right. the way that we treat couples mm -hmm. coming in to talk about um, infidelity. Right, so mm -hmm. one message I would send to you too if you've ever wondered, is this person I'm working with, so if you're, if you're another counselor or you're a minister or someone you're, that works with couples, mm -hmm. or if you are a couple that's watching this, um, and if you're wondering, is, is this person possibly a sex addict? Mm -hmm. Um, some of the things to look for it would be that chronic infidelity, right. like if there are multiple partners, anonymous sex, it's some some things about it that just it feels like there's something more there. Right. And right. but there's also some other things too that would constitute as um, infidelity. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, one of the big questions that's asked is, what about an emotional? Emotional. Hey, people describe yeah. them right uh, most often as an emotional affair, an emotional right. relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had feelings for somebody else. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and the, another type is through technology, right. online relationships. And with those two types, there's a lot of ambiguity yes. involved. And I think that's why they're so confusing and they're so, there's some discrepancy there. Um, but we will say that there is such thing as an emotional affair and they are hurtful and damaging to relationships and they need 
to be tended to as a wound, right. just like you would tend to um, a physical wound mm -hmm. to your body, you would need to tend to these emotional wounds. Right. And so uh, what you can do if you're, if you're uh, thinking that it might be an emotional affair or an or online mm -hmm. relationship is focus on right. th uh, the feeling of betrayal. Right. If you feel betrayed, mm -hmm. then there possibly is an emotional wound in your relationship, and it might be worth worth it at that point to go ahead and seek out professional help so so the counselors can help you start sifting through all this and help you make sense of what has happened that generated that right. feeling. Right, talk that through. Yeah. Um, I think one of the definitions that's helpful for us when we're working with clients is the idea that infidelity is the breaking of trust when you keep intimate, meaningful secrets from your partner. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the idea that you're keeping secrets, that you had something that was off limits to your partner that was potentially damaging to them. Exactly. That is where the, it elicits that sense of betrayal. <clears throat> right. right. And that's going to create a wound. Now, the size and the depth is you know unique to each couple show. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the depth of the wound, the... The intensity of yes. it, uh, it's, that's just going to be different from couple to couple. And that's why working with professional counselors, therapists that know, that, that work in this area mm -hmm. is important because uh, they can help assess for, for that and because that changes the right. direction of treatment when, uh, based upon how deep the wound is, or it can, for it sure. It can, right. And technology has made it a little more confusing as to, mm -hmm. is this an affair if I just chatted? Mm -hmm with somebody online, um, you know, if it's sexual in nature, but nothing happened, which is what a lot of people will say to us. Um, technology definitely has made this area more gray. Exactly. And so we're trying to help you just kind of get to, if there's some piece of clarity, it's that, was there a secret that was kept that feels like a betrayal to you? And if so, then that's something to explore. Right. So there are um, a few myths and I did a, a YouTube video on this right. recently on the uh, some uh, five myths of infidelity and I'll uh, have Valerie put a, a link up there for that so that you can watch that at your leisure but I just want to cover a couple of those in this in this uh, uh, webinar that we're doing today mm -hmm. um, and just so that you understand a couple things that I think are important and one is that infidelity uh, does happen in good marriages. So the myth is, is that infidelity right. only happens in right. bad marriages. It's a symptom of a bad right. relationship. You'll hear a lot of people say it like that. Yeah. But we, we've we been doing this for a while now, and we see people that have mm -hmm. been in rough, difficult relationships experience infidelity. Mm -hmm. We've seen lots of couples that say, we were happy, we were good, and mm -hmm. this still happened. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. The um, uh, There... A lot of people are a little shell shocked yes. by it, and right. literature also backs it up too. That there are, uh, it, all it takes is just the 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 right, right. the right uh, the wrong the wrong frame of mind yeah. um, in the right circumstances, and infidelity can happen in a good relationship. Right. So we want to just kind of clear that myth right. out. Um, the other one too that we think is very important for this. Uh, presentation is for you to understand um, is that there's a myth that marriages and relationships can't survive and thrive after mm -hmm. infidelity and that also is not true no it's not true we have the pleasure every day of seeing that not be true mm -hmm. in the couples that we work with and see that get better um, and we'll end the presentation with kind of reiterating that but um, these are opportun these challenges are opportunities actually sometimes to, to even make your relationship better. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, marriages can survive and thrive. So mm -hmm. that's the message we, we want to send to you is that um, if you're dealing with that, you're, what, you're tuning in today because that's happened to you. Mm -hmm. We see it happen every day where people are getting better from this. And one thing Carrie has said in, in some of our conversations, just between the two of us is that it's not the worst thing that can happen in our lives, but it definitely is something that is devastating and we don't want to ignore. So right. it can end relationships right. for sure. So we don't want to make light of it either and make right. you think that this is not a big deal. It right. is a big deal. It needs to be tended to. Sure. So speaking of that, we're going to talk, um, when Josh introduced this, we're going to start talking kind of about the first entity, the first piece and how do you recover? How do you um, heal from this? And we're going to talk about the wounded or betrayed partner. Um, and so we wanted to introduce those myths before because sometimes when you're in the situation, um, the amount of shock is going to depend on what kind of relationship 
um, have you been right. in? So if you've been in a good relationship and your partner mm -hmm. um, is unfaithful, the amount of shock is going to feel absolutely devastating. Sure. Um, you're going to think, I, you know, how can this happen to us? We were, we were good. I thought everything was fine. Mm -hmm. And you're definitely going to experience the incredible symptoms of feeling like your world is completely upside right. down. You don't know left from right. Sure. And, it's and earth shattering. Down. Earth shattering, right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and so, so what we see, we, we've seen this a lot with uh, the wounded spouse or uh -huh. partner is um, they can very easily slip into this realm of blaming themselves, yes. trying to figure out what what did I do wrong? Right. Where where did I go wrong right. here that made this happen? Right. And the 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 reality is is nothing. You did you did nothing wrong. There's nothing. There's no. Uh, you don't carry that kind of power. We we, we have some uh, expressions in our culture that amongst a lot of expressions that mm -hmm. just aren't helpful really for relationships. And one of those is. Um, she drove me to drinking, or he drove me into the arms of another man. Mm -hmm. and, and the reality is, is we don't have that kind of power in relationships. Mm -hmm. So sure, you can take responsibility for if your relationship was suffering and right. struggling. Right. I mean, you can own your responsibility for that part of your relationship, but there are many ways that you can deal with a struggling relationship besides going out and finding somebody else. Absolutely. And so that is a choice in, right. in ownership uh, for that does not belong to you if you're the wounded spouse in that. Right, absolutely. And, and you know, you have to understand that that doubt and that going kind of that, um, sometimes it can be obsessive g mm -hmm. scrolling back through the history of your relationship trying to identify mm -hmm. where did we go wrong what did I do there could mm -hmm. I have done this could have I avoided it right. um, that's your trying to understand now a world that used to make sense but doesn't make sense now anymore and you're trying right. to go back through it and you can mm -hmm. experience those symptoms of obsessive thinking and mm -hmm. incredible amounts of anxiety right. um, you don't know when, when your earth has been shaken you don't know how to take the next step Right. Right. And so, you know, Carrie's describing this crazy phenomenon mm -hmm. that happens to the wounded spouses and partners um, that have been betrayed by uh, from infidelity, mm -hmm. uh, where it's just all of a sudden it's like this world that, th that you have come to know and love and trust. Uh, it just rejected you, just tossed you out. Just mm -hmm. and it's and it's not like something that happened gradually or over time. Right. It's just like all of a sudden, in one fell swoop. Right you're tossed out or you're derailed mm -hmm. you might think of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and nothing makes sense anymore at least that's our, our experience of working with right. uh, spouses that are going through right. this right they say things often I don't know who I am how did this happen I don't know what to do next I used to I used to know myself or I used to have self-confidence or I used to be able to make decisions and now I can't anymore right. that's a symptom of the trauma mm -hmm. of right. trying to get through infidelity right mm -hmm. and so it does, it does pose the idea that it's not just the spouse or partner that betrayed you, it's the world that, as you knew it mm -hmm. has betrayed you. And that's really mm -hmm. what the, the wounded spouse and partner's having to deal with yeah. because it's, it's actually, I think, much bigger than uh, the, that relationship right. at right. that point. It's, yeah. it's a big, big deal and it's a really hard thing for them to go through and to start making sense of. Right. And a lot of also what you're experiencing we could describe as grief, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a huge loss of who you thought you were, what you thought your partner was, what you mm -hmm. thought your relationship or your family or your position in the community. And so if you've ever lost anybody in any context, you know that that's, mm -hmm. you know, not only a difficult, but you're yeah. feeling angry and sad and you're trying to control right. it and you don't, you don't know what to do mm -hmm. next. You're going to feel depressed. You're going to feel down, dark. Yeah. Um, that's so, what it's like. So we'll hear, um, often hear from the wounded spouse that, that referring to the betray, the, the uh, offending spouse, that um, I don't even recognize this person, right? right? So right. we hear a lot, mm -hmm. right? Which is true, but right. they also, when they start doing some self-exploration, they don't recognize the person in the mirror right. either. Right. So it's really challenged them on that level mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. because it's thrown them into this, this gap where now they're forced to have to make some, some changes for themselves that they weren't ready to make. You know, it's not like they asked right. to they do this. Know. It they wasn't on their own will. Right, it was put upon them. Exactly. And often um, 
you know, it's true that sometimes we'll have the wounded spouses and partners come in and actually be experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. That's right. Um, that they may actually meet criteria for that diagnosis. Right. And so along with that, they, I think this is where um, the spouses and partners will say, like, I think I'm going crazy. Right. Like, am I going crazy? Right. Right. And we're here to tell you that, no, mm -hmm. you are not going crazy. In fact, a lot of things, and Carrie's going to cover these in just a minute, but a lot of things that you're experiencing are very normal given this type of circumstance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so let's go ahead and talk a little okay. bit about right. some of those so things. So a lot of times clients will describe to me as I just feel numb, right? I feel nothing. I should be crying or I should be screaming or I should be throwing their clothes out mm -hmm. the window, but I'm not. I'm just, I'm just numb. Um, and a lot of times that's kind of feeling robotic going through your day. You're like, I know I went to work or I know I paid that bill but I don't have any real memory of it. Um, right. They also will avoid certain places or activities, kind of just like I'm just going to go in my hole and go in my turtle shell and I just don't mm -hmm. want to deal, I don't want to see, I don't want right. to hear, I don't even want to, I don't want to go to counseling Because the world is so it. unsafe. Right, right? it's so and scary, so. you're just trying to make it. A lot of clients will also talk about sleep. They want to sleep all the time, right? Mm -hmm. and it's a way of avoiding, it's a, it's a way of being numb. And sometimes you can even use substances or mind altering, you know, behaviors to try and right. be numb, not feel. Okay. Um, another one is hyper, the technical term is hypervigilance, um, but that's the crazy stuff. That's where you feel crazy. You can't stop thinking. You, your mm -hmm. mind's going, a, you know, a million miles mm -hmm. an hour and the thoughts are intrusive mm -hmm. and you're obsessing and you're mm -hmm. um, maybe even paranoid, you right. know, worrying, is this going right. to happen? What's going to happen next? Is right. this, you know, is there any threat? Yeah. Um, you all of a sudden will find that you're kind of an angry person. Mm -hmm. A lot of clients will say that, right? I didn't know mm -hmm. how angry and difficult I could right. be. So some ways that also manifests too is like when the the their uh, partner walks in every time they walk in a room mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the wounded or betrayed spouse is is constantly paying attention to right. what they're doing right. and 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 they'll often say like I don't want to be this person right. I, I don't want to be like this I don't want to uh, keep them under a microscope right. and again uh, we want you to know that this is very normal right. and there are definitely some things that we do to help with these types right. of symptoms to, to help them fade over time, right. but you, to you need to be kind to yourself mm -hmm. because um, you're not uh, responding to this in a way that um, is abnormal. It's, right. it's definitely it's normal. It's, it's normal. It's appropriate for the event that you've gone Absolutely. through. Absolutely. And another unfortunate um, symptom people can have is that kind of those intrusive thoughts or memories, flashbacks, is how a lot of people describe it. Right? Mm -hmm. They it just hit them, um, re-experiencing or rethinking. Um, falling, you know, a lot of, you know, crying in public mm -hmm. and unable to stop. Um, and that's just a symptom, again, mm -hmm. of the trauma that you've been through. Right. And that's part of the treatment that mm -hmm. you're going to be able to get when you're working mm -hmm. with a qualified professional. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're, and we're, we're going to talk about the unfaithful spouse Parker, here yeah. in just mm -hmm. a minute. Um, and we're about to, to go right into that. But let's... Let's talk a, a little bit about uh, the different type of wounds that mm -hmm. we're dealing with here because yeah. the wound that the uh, betrayed spouse is feeling is very different than what the uh, unfaithful spouse is going through. Right. And right. so um, I often refer or think of uh, the wound that the betrayed spouse is feeling as a deep gash, a deep cut, and um, it's struck an artery or something like that and they're bleeding out, you know, and um, it's it's uh, it's a gusher, and we got to stop the bleeding, and that is priority one. Right, right. So we can't do um, if you're a therapist and your clients are coming in after just you know discovering or about a, an infidelity or series of infidelities. You can't mm -hmm. go to increasing couple communication and conflict resolution right. because this person is bleeding out. Right. So like going to mm -hmm. the doctor and saying, "I hear you got a cough." Right. When their leg has a huge gash. That's right. You have to address the priority in the room, which is the right. deep, deep wound mm -hmm. uh, that the betrayed partner has experienced. Right. And in the in the, I, I hate to say, you know, the great thing about the. <laughs> Uh, the unfaithful partner being present, but it is a good mm -hmm. thing is, uh, right. when the unfaithful partner is present and very helpful and mandatory for the healing of the relationship that they can actually be involved in helping that bleeding stop. Right. And right. so uh, the approach that I take with them is is more of a team approach where mm -hmm. I, I tell them that we are going to 
uh, team up together right. to t- to tend to this person, this other person's wounds, to get that bleeding to stop. That's our priority right. one, and they can take a, v- a very much of an active role. Mm-hmm. It's difficult, mm-hmm. but it can often uh, yeah. help cr- increase intimacy in the relationship that they sure. have in, ex- in ways they haven't may, sure. may not have experienced. I think it's before. a difference maker, and yeah. I think now as we kind of move into talking about the unfaithful partner to. To really, uh, you know, just address and be direct with that, your role in this recovery is incredibly important. Um, right. How much you're um, invested in the healing and the care of the wounded spouse is going to go a long way in how mm-hmm. well you do recover, right? Right. And so it's very important for the unfaithful spouse to take ownership. So remember, mm-hmm. um, our saying we we said earlier is that we don't have the power to drive someone into the arms of somebody else. Right. So the unfaithful partner has to take 100% responsibility for a decision that they made Mm -hmm. to act out beyond their marriage or relationship. Right, and ownership in their words and in their actions. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes this is difficult because Mm -hmm. the wounded spouse is already having a lot of uh, moments where they're blaming themselves and they can very easily interpret the messages from the unfaithful spouse as being blaming as well. Right, right. And so we definitely we we want to we would help that person not fall into that trap right. and work very carefully with them on on how to talk about things mm-hmm. and, and um, basically you got to remember that this is your spouse that has been wounded by this is a very hurt and injured mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. Uh, and and you approach with kid gloves basically right. because uh, when you're injured like that. Everything hurts. Right, it sure does. And and part of that taking ownership is also being able to acknowledge and really step into and experience the reality of the pain that everyone Mm. is experiencing. And so that doesn't mean a lot of times, you know, people will say, um, well, I know I can't change it, but I want to move on, right? Mm -hmm. I want to get better. I'm never going to do it again. And and that's probably very true Mm -hmm. that that's how they feel. However, we can't gloss over this big, you know, wound right. that happened, and so that does mean having to witness and uh, your partner struggling, mm-hmm. right? That does mean having to hear about how they're feeling, even when the things that you're hearing are really difficult. That's right. Mm-hmm. So there is a phenomenon, though, that we we feel like it's important to <laughs> yes, uh, to, to talk about. Yeah. That's called gaslighting, or it might be referred to as crazy making. Right. But uh, it's it's definitely an easy trap for. The unfaithful spouse to fall into, especially mm-hmm. if they're uh, really dealing with a lot of denial right. and haven't completely accepted the responsibility of what they've done. Right. And uh, we we definitely look for that. And uh, if you're uh, working with a wounded spouse, or if you are the wounded spouse, mm-hmm. um, if you feel like that uh, uh, the unfaithful partner has is making you feel crazy, mm-hmm. like you're the crazy one, mm-hmm. like am I go- if you've had that thought, like am I going crazy here, mm-hmm. like. Um, that's often uh, gaslighting taking right. place, and 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 we, we'll help with that too, and help bring right. people into reality. But right. um, I we feel like it was important to bring that yeah. up because yeah. if that's happening, we again want to remind the wounded spouse mm-hmm. that you're no, you are not the crazy right. one here. You're right. not going crazy. Here, right. So. And part of the taking ownership is avoiding gaslighting your partner, right? You don't want to make them not trust themselves or question Mm -hmm. what's going on for them because that continues to hurt them. And so while that may be a tendency because it defends and protects yourself, it's not going to help your the person you care about and it's not going to help your relationship. Right. Right. So again in uh, the uh, talking about the role of the unfaithful partner, Mm -hmm. um, one thing uh, that you, that the unfaithful partner has to recognize is that that your spouse is very wounded, and so they cannot be a person for you to lean on. Mm-hmm. And so, but at the same time, you're still going to have thoughts and feelings, and you 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 didn't stop being a human being. In other words, so right. it is important for you to lean somewhere. Right. It just right. can't be on them because it'd be like if if they were in a terrible car crash. And they're on bed rest, and um, you hurt your foot or something, and you ask them to get up and go get you something to take care of your foot. I mean, it just doesn't make right. sense. It doesn't. And, and even so, if they, even if your wounded partner says, "I want you to come to me. I want you to tell me when you're having a hard time," 
they're still not able to, right? So right. that's when having a, right. a counselor, a therapist, that's when having, you know, supportive friends, family, community <coughs> members that you can lean on that are healthy and appropriate to lean on. Right. Because, yeah, the unfaithful partner mm -hmm. is, they are experiencing mm -hmm. a big change. They're experiencing mm -hmm. guilt. They're experiencing shame, mm -hmm. um, remorse. Exactly. Um, but they're also, I'm going to another piece of it, they're also a little bit relieved. A lot of times right. we hear people say, I'm so glad I don't have to keep this secret anymore. Right. And and, that, and, and we're going to talk about that here a, a little bit more at length. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but one thing, one message I'd like to send to all of the, the ministers out there watching this or mm -hmm. other counselors, mentors that are uh, trying to help these couples through this, you, you guys have a very important role right. in right. this. And one thing you can do is help that um, the healthy, uh, unfaithful spouse partner build a support system right. so they can have those places to lean on, mm -hmm. uh, so that they are being so that they are being tended to right. Right. as well, and not putting that burden upon the wounded spouse. Right, so, right, absolutely. Right, and so um, there's a, a the, kind of a rock star right now in the world of uh, um, infidelity, I guess mm -hmm. we might say, in some of the research and literature that's out there is Esther Perel. And she talks about this as being um, a journey towards self-discovery. Mm -hmm. And when I first stumbled onto her stuff, I was like, "That's a, from the work that we've done." I'm like, "That's exactly, exactly what, what it is. is." That's how. That's the good. The couples that do good recovery. Mm -hmm. That's the difference maker, right? A journey of right. self-discovery. Mm -hmm. right. So as Carrie was saying, like the the the, the uh, unfaithful spouse is in a very different place mm -hmm. often because it's not just grief and loss they're experiencing. They also can be experiencing relief because whatever right. where whatever I was stuck in in life sometimes this just frees them up right and, and gives them a good jolt forward mm -hmm. and I can start defining myself right. and rebuilding myself right. and learning to be happy with myself again mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the way we explain it to our couples that we're working with is that the the wounded spouse is often grieving something very differently mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. the unfaithful spouse. Right, right. So, so the the wounded spouse is uh, grieving the loss of the relationship, the loss of their self, and again, as we talked about, how they even made sense of the world. You know, there's a really big loss that they're dealing with. This place that I found my comfort, that it, and at minimum, a place that I just made sense of, right, right. Um, has now been very disrupted right. and is basically on fire and burning up, and I can't trust it anymore. Right. So that's the loss they're dealing with. Right. But the unfaithful partner is experiencing the grief of watching their spouse, their partner suffer in pain right. because yeah. of the infidelity. Yeah. And so. It's still grief. It's still loss. It's just mm -hmm. a different kind, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and and I think so significant. A, I think a lot of reasons for that is because whatever it, whatever it was that got them so mixed up that they felt like they needed to go do this thing, right? right. Um, uh, really reflects that their world that, that they knew if they understood wasn't safe it right. wasn't it didn't make all that much sense right. they're really troubled by it and this is this doesn't fit for everybody right. but it's often right. the case right. and so that's where that's why there's that sense of relief yeah. because now i don't have to be stuck in that anymore right. Right. and so in other words the way the the way their partner was experiencing the marriage mm -hmm. and the world they lived in was very different than what they were experiencing right. Right. And so, um, so we, we try to help understand that when, because sometimes the spouse, the wounded spouse will say, uh, why are you not more upset about this? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and the answer to that, I think, is that it's because they're not grieving the same thing. Right, right. You know? That's right. Now, the, that kind of takes us nicely into the third leg, the third entity of um, treating infidelity, and that's the relationship. Um, because there's what you know a lot of times we'll talk about is the new and old world struggle so mm -hmm. what you used to do or be um, is no more and so now you're entering into a world of uncertainty right right yeah so this is tough because mm -hmm. what you have what you used to trust and you felt safe in mm -hmm. like Carrie said doesn't exist anymore you don't trust it anymore mm -hmm. so you, you, know, you can't go back right you can't go back but where you're headed 
Well, that's you know that's uncharted territory. That's so true. there's also a trust element there too. Yeah, like I, sure. I'm leery of that, you mm -hmm. know, because I don't know what it's going to be like right. over there. And will the will the two of us be able to make it work right. in that world? Right. And and so this is also when when we're working with clients, we usually start with our clients both in individuals therapy and then then put them in couples therapy, kind of depending on you know, their mm -hmm. readiness, their willingness, et cetera. And so when we start couples therapy, we've, we've tried to get some stability for both mm -hmm. um, the wounded partner and the offending partner so that they can go into couples therapy and that they can actually mm -hmm. gr grieve together and process through the pain right. of, you know, what, was, what they've lost and the unknown mm -hmm. of what's coming mm -hmm. next, right. right? And so, yeah, working through that grief and loss is really important. Mm -hmm. And something else that we do that we also think is really important is something we call developing a plan mm -hmm. for peace of mind right. because the um, like like we said the they're in two different places mm -hmm. and often the uh, the unfaithful spouse is able to kind of get momentum going mm -hmm. in life mm -hmm. and meanwhile the wounded spouse is, is at home or at work and constantly right. stewing in these feelings and emotions right. and and uh, what I tell the uh, the unfaithful spouse is I do not want that person mm -hmm. to be stewing in their angst or anxiety right. or their pain for more than a couple minutes without having a plan right. to to get out of that. I mean, if you were if right. this was a medical situation and you're in pain, you're going to be hitting your button hitting your for button for more meds. That's right, right. Mm -hmm. and and you would have a plan. You right. would you would automatically develop a plan. But with when it comes to wound emotional wounds, right. we emotional. often just ignore those and just try to go back to our everyday life, and it just isn't helpful. Right, and so a plan for peace of mind is developed with with your therapist, and it addresses all three of these entities, right? Right. Because what we want to start doing is not just acknowledging the pain, but we want to start helping mm -hmm. people move forward so that their eyes and their ears match. And what I mean by that is that when mm -hmm. someone tells you something in your relationship that you can see that it's true. Right. Right. And that gives you the peace of mind. It's when things right. are conflicting that people get stuck and have those intrusive right. thoughts and experiences. Right. And the plan for peace of mind isn't the grand all fix all. Right. No, no, it, no. But it does, I think, set the tone for healing right. in the relationship. So we feel like it's something we do early on right. in treatment. It's very important mm -hmm. for a, a fair recovery. Mm -hmm. Right. So we know that uh, there's, you know, we packed we, we packed a lot in <laughs> mm -hmm. into a short amount of time. We appreciate um, appreciate you uh, hanging with us in this, but right. we do want to encourage you that if this has been your experience, or if you know someone that has mm -hmm. um, experienced infidelity in their relationship, or you're working with someone, is to go ahead and encourage them to seek out a professional that right. works uh, in a fair recovery or with sex addiction or things like that. Right. And particularly uh, so that they can get the right kind of treatment. Right, and you can find um, resources. Um, PsychologyToday.com is um, a easy, easy, good website to mm -hmm. find local professionals. Just encourage you to look that they do treat relationships, that they do work with a fair recovery. Um, right. If you're wondering or concerned about it being some kind of sexual compulsion, um, you can go to SexHelp.com um, and it will give you a list of certified sex addiction therapists. Mm -hmm. okay. And one thing that we're excited about is that uh, we, we hope you'll peruse our website. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually offer an amazing Affair Recovery Couples Weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, it's something that uh, we love doing. Uh, we, uh, it's uh, Carrie and I and our colleague Rebel. Uh, so again, we have that team approach model, mm -hmm. and um, one of our favorite things to do. <laughs> and so we'll definitely put a link to that in the comments section so mm -hmm. that uh, you can peruse that. And uh, you can also get 10% uh, off since you watched this today. Or if you even want to share this with somebody, right. that's fine. There's a, all we would want you to do is just enter the code that we're putting into uh, the comments section. You can enter that code into the subject line when you contact us about that. And if you uh, decide to do our Affair Recovery Couples Weekend, we'll, uh, also, we'll give you that 10% off of that since you spent some time with us today right. Right. Um, on this uh, live event. Live event. Yep. So, um, we want to thank yeah. you for taking the time to listen. We hope some of it was helpful. Um, it's a complex issue. There's no way we can um, get, get through mm -hmm. it thoroughly in the short amount of time that we have. But we hope that it's helpful. And we hope that you leave here today with some messages of hope and an, an idea that recovery is possible for right. relationships. Right? All right. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you.